Click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, in today's class, we'll be studying the most interesting topic of your physics and in fact in quantum physics that is photoelectric effect. Well, photoelectric effect as the name suggests includes photo and electric. Photo means light and electric means electricity. So in this module, we'll be studying how electricity is being produced by using photons. So let's begin. <music> As you can see, photoelectric effects definition reads out to be as the photoelectric effect is the emission of electrons or free carriers when light hits a material. Now, the most important points are emission of electrons. As you all know, electricity is being conducted by only electrons or free carriers in case of some other materials except metals. But when only when light hits a material. Well, this is not an ordinary material, of course, to make a point. It is a special material in which electrons are emitted. Electrons will not be emitted on any random material when you hit the light. So, basically, this is what photoelectric effect is. The emitted electrons, the electrons which are emitted can be called as photoelectrons. Why the word photoelectrons? Because those are special type of electrons which are not free electrons, neither the valence electrons. They are the electrons which are knocked out of the material and hence they are called as photoelectrons. Since they are knocked out of the material because of photons, they are called as photoelectrons. Again, this could be an important question for you. Viva, please make a note of it. Now, let's see how it works. Now, let's consider a metallic surface. And on this metallic surface, I'll pass a radiation. Now, well, this radiation is nothing but as energy by which I'm trying to knock off an electron from the material surface. Now, after the passage of energy, an electron will knock off from the surface and hence this electron is nothing but as, as you studied earlier, it is a photoelectron. Now, is it always true that whatever energy that you provide to the material gets into the electron movement? Well, that's no. Why? Because the certain amount of energy that an electron needs to actually begin the emission. Well, the equation stands out to be the energy supplied equals work function plus the kinetic energy. Now, what is this work function? Well, work function is the threshold energy. It is the threshold energy or the minimum energy which is required by the electron to just begin the emission. Now, to put it in a simple way, let's take an example. Well, let's say suppose you have supplied 100 units of energy and the material has a work function of 25 units. So, out of 100, your 25 units of energy are purely wasted just to bring the electron to an emission position. Or you can say, this is the amount of energy that you'll spend just for the electron to get on the surface so that now emission could begin. So, for the rest 75 remaining energy, you will be only getting your kinetic energy. So, as you can see, the best material could be the material which has less threshold energy. Well, this could be again an important question in your viva. As you can see, it's not just a regular material. It's It should be a material which is having lowest possible threshold energy. Well, ideally, it should be zero, but practically, it should be as least as possible. You cannot have negative threshold energy levels. Why? Because electrons will not just emit out of the material surface on its own. Again, this could be an important question for you, viva. Please make a note of it. Now, as you can see, what if I provide energy which is less than threshold? Now, let's take an example here. As you can see, I have photons or light which are below the threshold level. Now, if my light is below the threshold level, as you can see, no matter what amount of intensity or what amount of radiations I put, the electrons won't get knocked out of the surface. Well, this is a typical example where you can see I've been bombarding the surface with this yellow colored light, but there are no blue colored electrons which are emitting out of the surface. Well, this shows my energy is far below the threshold level. 
So again, question could arise, how much is the minimum energy that you need to provide for photo emission to begin? Well, this is the threshold level. If you provide energy just equal to the threshold level, your emission is just going to begin. This is the point you need to remember while solving the numericals. Now, let's take an example wherein I'll be showing three different types of radiations. As you can see, in the first example, I have passed red color radiations and I can see no electrons getting knocked off of the surface. So this indicates my energy by this red colored radiation is far below the threshold level. And the next, as you can see in the green radiation, my electrons are just getting knocked off or they are just above rising the surface. So you can say this energy is quite above or at least the threshold level. And the next example, you can see the energy is quite maximum as you can see the electrons getting knocked off the surface very well. So here the energy is quite far above the threshold level. Now, if you notice the wavelength, in first case, as you can see the wavelength is quite high. As you can see here, the waves are of bigger in size. Here the size comparatively gets smaller and here the smallest. Well, again, important question could come from a viva. He could draw certain wave patterns and could ask you which of the following waves possesses highest energy or the lowest energy. Do need to remember as your lambda value or the wavelength value decreases, your energy increases. This is an important relation that you need to know. Of course, we'll be studying this relation in the further classes as well. But just as a matter of point, do remember it. Thanks so much for watching for this video. For more videos, stay tuned to Ikeda and subscribe to Ikeda.